LEGO City Undercover. A hidden gem from the Wii U era, LCU first came out in 2013 as an exclusive for the Nintendo Wii U. Upon release it actually received good reviews, getting a 78 on Metacritic and giving enjoyment to its players. And that's not just me, the game was successful enough on the Wii U to get ported to the modern consoles and the PC in 2017. For everyone who already knows this game, I put timestamps in the description so you can skip to the relevant parts for the speedrunning. But What's this game all about and how does it compare to other LEGO games? To answer that, we first need to talk about the general identity of the game. LEGO City Undercover is an open world action adventure game with the typical LEGO flair and humor. Some people like to describe it as GTA for kids. What they mean by that are elements like stealing cars on the overworld, fighting baddies and just general open world experience in LEGO City. The main difference compared to other LEGO games is that LCU is a completely new IP, telling a unique LEGO story and having full voice acting. The main character, police legend Chase McCain, has returned to LEGO City and finds the city plagued by criminals. Right at the start of the game, we're introduced to Rex Fury, at least we're told about him. He is a criminal who previously escaped the Albatross prison and is now messing up LEGO City. He is the main antagonist of the game and our motivation is to obviously get him back into jail and arrest. Now that we know the basics of the game, how does all of this translate into speedrunning? The category we'll take a look at today is called Undercover Present. It involves playing the first four chapters of the game as fast as possible with glitches etc. allowed. The current world record in the category is held by Loopy using two controllers as a second player and achieving a 5644. The person with the best time using only one controller on the leaderboard is Meno888 with a 10541. Twitch and YouTube channels of both of them are linked down in the description. They were kind enough to let me use their footage for this video. You should totally check them out, they are mostly doing speedruns of multiple games. So please leave them a like and subscribe to their channels as well. But why do we separate the two controllers? Using one controller mostly involves playing the game normally while two controllers or one P2C allows a lot of out of bounds clips and other skips thereby saving a lot of time in the special assignments, basically the levels of the game. So how do we do clipping? Basically, it's very simple actually. The game is kind of confused when deciding where to place a player if he or she warps to the other player using the menu. This can be used to continually warp one player behind the other, which causes them to clip into walls and other objects. Once you're out of bounds, you can reach loading zones and skip normal means of progression. A very useful phenomenon occurring here is the up warp, which can cause the player to warp onto a higher level when trying to warp through LEGO objects. Finally, we're all set up to begin with the actual run. We'll be mostly skipping the parts of the game where you just play fast and just talk about what strats to use when and what super bricks can be found where. Right after we leave Auburn and get into the Cherry Tree Hill, we take a right and drive towards the house at the end of the street. This also is the first small difference between one and two controllers. The goal is now to go to the pool behind the house and grab the super brick, granting us 10k bricks to build with later. Using one controller, you drive to the pool, grab it, then drive to the police station. But using two, you drive by, drop in player two and let him grab the brick while continuing to drive with the other player. This requires some focus as you need to still keep driving with player one while collecting the brick with player two. Now that we successfully left the police station, the clowns rob the bank. As soon as you arrive and the cutscene is over, the clown tries to flee in a truck. Push him to the right instead of ramming into him. This way, he can't drive away after you hit him and you will get him much faster. Two other clowns fled as well. You now catch the second one in a multi-level garden. Using one controller, you scan him, you get the mushroom and follow him up, while also destroying the obstacles on the garden hose. By using a second player though, you can do a strat, obviously a clown skip. By jumping on to the white piece of the mushroom, you can get up without actually building it. This causes the clown to stay, while you can go up to the dog's hut where he is gonna get to. Now use the second player to build the mushroom, causing the clown to run, and then follow him. When he gets to the hut, he'll immediately run away for you to arrest him. A small tip here, hold the jump button while jumping on the trampoline to always go high instantly.
The first clone got away to the Auburn Dogs, hiding on a ship. Upon your arrival, you climb some containers, scan him in the ship, talk to the foreman, get inside the room and get to the main dock. This can be skipped however in 1P2C by simply driving towards the room and clipping into it, saving a lot of time. We now get to the other forward, who lost his sandwich. The intended way is to get his sandwich and then getting up on the ship. Using the so-called sandwich skip, you can however run to the back end of the dock. Using a precise jump or a warp, get onto a container and then the ship, thereby skipping the cutscenes. To get to Auburn Bridge, take a right and drive to the left of the bridge, through a tiny space of grass. Our next goal is to get to a vehicle calling point next to the gas station. Before you trigger the sequence, destroy the green barrel behind the station as well as the bin next to it, to get two super bricks. Trigger the cutscene and just ignore the task he gives you and build the vehicle calling point instead. This, however, is only done in the two player route because you need two additional super bricks for the single player route. A small time save can be achieved here by dropping in a second player and using the vehicle calling point instantly without the need to wait for all the unlockables. This is only possible in version 1.0 of the game because in my experience I'm playing on the version 1.02, which we'll come to later. This is actually not possible and we'll need to wait for all the unlockables. Since we're already talking about the game versions, we gotta talk about 1.02. In the current version of the game, clipping gets a lot less consistent, but you can also skip cutscenes anymore. This dilemma has caused the community on the Discord server, link in the description, to decide that all cutscenes should be subtracted from the final time of the run, thereby not giving a negative to all runners running on a later version of the game. After getting the car, drive towards the castle on the right and drive through the small path. Once you get back onto the road, drive it normally until you get to the left corner. Immediately after the corner, get out of the car and up the left hill to grab a super brick. For the way back, just use the stunt jumps on the left of the castle. After arriving in the special assignment, some assaults, you can either use the normal path or warp yourself up from the door on the left next to the spawn to save a little bit of time in 1P2C. The more important strat in this level is the rope jump. So skip a lot of the level. Double jump onto the rope between the two buildings. Normally, you'll automatically be sent down, but this can be avoided. You need to permanently spam the back buttons to swap your costumes while also spamming jump. Do this while you're facing northeast on the control stick to slowly get up the rope. Try a few angles here to get the one where you get up the fastest. After leaving the assignment, aim towards the police station. When you're next to the big shop on the other side, enter it, destroy the brown box and build the Lego figure to spawn a super brick outside. This strat is used in the single player runs and in Loopy's world record. However, it can be ignored in the 1P2C because there's another brick you can get instead later. Once you arrive at the station, wait until Honey ends his call to skip a short running animation on the inside. You will now already have enough bricks to instantly build the ferry and get to Albatross. Upon your arrival, try to destroy the brown box and instantly jump onto its pieces to get onto the tower and skip a section. If you don't get this first try, you need to do the normal way in one player or clip through the later gate at the end of this area. Repeat this jump on the wall jump section to skip building the jump pads on the wall. Arriving in a prison yard, you want to either go to the basketball court in one player or use another clip to get into the area behind the fence with the prisoners playing basketball. Clip into it, fight them and go to the court with your newly gotten basketball. The next skip 
can be found in the following special assignment. The single player round is basically doing the level normally. However, in one player 2C, you can skip having to fight the prisoners by clipping into the cell with the robber outfit. Now follow up by warping twice. Each time you rise one level of the prison, which allows you to skip nearly the entire first area. Be aware though, in my personal experience using 1.02 of the game, it's extremely inconsistent to clip into the cell in the first place. So I fight the prisoners and only do the upwards clips, losing time in the process. So obviously you should get version 1.0 of the game if you are able to. Once you're in Rex's cell. Go to the right, destroying the punching bag, then get the button in the pool without fighting the prisoners and get up the toilet path for the last button you need to open the way out. Upon your arrival at the mine, get on top of the hut to grab the big super brick. Break into the small house for the valve. Now jump up the mine to grab the second big super brick. In the mine, the procedures do change again for 1P2C. Both versions jump up the left slope. Try aiming for the lamp here, to get up the level a bit earlier and get to the miner's outfit faster. In 1P1C, you will now get the dynamite from the bottom right and do the normal way of progression. 1P2C will instead leave one player near the jump pad, teleport back the miner and go out of bounds to go behind the silver boulders and leave early. Similar in the second room, either go the normal route here or clip out of bounds on the right standing on the top of the rail to fall off and skip having to do the parachute jump. A tip here is to aim for the square of water right at the end of the tunnel. As soon as you see that, try to go back in bounds of your control stick and you will land onto the water. If you do this too late, you will fall to your death and have to do the jump again. Arriving in the last room, grab the big super brick found upwards by jumping onto the right platform. 1P2C can save some time here by already going to the super build. The last difference between the routes is found right at the end. Instead of going the normal way into the house-like structure where you find the audio recorder, clip into it to save time. The last two super bricks we'll collect can be found on top of the hut in the forest. Collect both if you're using single player or skip the one inside it in two player. Now if you remember, I was talking about the super brick in the shop being interchangeable. Because the one on the inside can be changed with the shop brick in two player. It might be faster to just break into the house and get the super brick instead of getting the one in the shop at the beginning of the run. One on the right by destroying the statue and using the searching field and one from the minigame on the left and building the super build to get the key. Using clips in 2 player mode, this can be skipped by clipping through the door. That's the reason 2 player needs 2 super bricks less. Now finish the assignment normally. After leaving, go to the right of the dojo and use the rope to get down to the police truck on Krabby Cove. The last strat of the run will now be to instantly turn left and take the shortcut. In my experience, this will also deny two enemy cars from spawning. Once you did that, the last turtle got beaten and you just need to safely return the police truck to the destination near the police station in Charity Hills. Stop the time as soon as the screen fades black before the cutscene. And that's it. The undercover percent run has been done. Now, this was an interesting experience, I gotta say. I guess everyone could hear my German accent, I hope it hasn't been too distracting from the actual strats. As I said in the beginning, please check out Loopy and Menno on Twitch or YouTube. They're both incredible runners and deserve credit for their runs. 
If you enjoyed this video, I'd like you to leave a like and sub, but most importantly, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the LEGO City Undercover speedrunning server. Check the description and have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. I don't fucking care at all